You may be seated. On behalf of the family, let me say thank you for being here today as we celebrate Tanya's life. And I do want to set the record straight right here at the very beginning of this service. Tanya is not dead, okay? She's alive and well in heaven. She's been healed. She's alive and well in heaven. And that's why the scripture says, speaking to us as Christians, we do not have to mourn as those who have no hope. There will be mourning today because we'll miss her for a while. Those of us as Christians, I know her family, they will see her again someday and we will be reunited and what a great reunion that will be. So there will be tears, there'll be weeping, but we don't have to mourn like those who have no hope if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because of Tanya's faith in Jesus, she's in heaven, she's been healed from this horrible cancer and she is walking the streets of gold, maybe dancing in the streets of gold today. And she has seen her Lord and Savior face to face and has already bowed down and worshiped Him and will continue doing that for all eternity. And those of us who have repented of our sins, confessed those to God, turned away from them, and placed our faith in Jesus, we know that one day we will be there with her again in glory. So we do not have to mourn or weep as those who have no hope, because our hope is in Jesus Christ. And I want to begin this service by reading from Psalm 23. Because I think it's a psalm that describes Tanya in her life. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. Wasn't that Tanya? She, she, the Lord was her shepherd. She had everything she needed. He li lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even when I go through the darkest valley, and she had been through some of those, the psalmist said, and Tanya could say too, I fear no danger, for you are with me. And so Jesus was every moment of her life. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's where she is with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, I come to you right now. And I do lift up this family. I pray for strength and comfort upon them today. God, as we're here to celebrate Tanya's life, I pray that that's what this service will be, just a celebration of who she was and who she was and who she is in you, Jesus. So I lift up this family, and I pray that they can find strength and even joy through this service today as we reflect and remember. God, I just pray that you'll be honored and that you'll be glorified. And I want to thank you for Tanya. I thank you for her life, for her love, for you, for her family, for her church family, for all those she was in contact with and all the years of faithful service she gave you. Jesus, I just want to thank you for all of that. God, again, let this service be a tribute to her and a tribute to your love for each one of us, including Tanya. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising. Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect divine. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels Singing from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is 
is my story. This is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise Him, my Savior. Perfect submission, all this at best. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Washing and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Tanya and her family was able to make it through these last couple of years because of that, the blessed assurance they had in their faith in Jesus Christ. Tanya Janelle Ritchie, age 59, of Perry, Oklahoma, went to be of her Lord on August 20th, 2021, in her home after a two-year battle with cancer. Tanya was born on June 27th, 1962, in Oklahoma City to Donald and Peggy Ann Ritchie. As the daughter of a minister, Tanya and her family followed the calling of the Lord around the state of Oklahoma. Tanya graduated from Perkins Tyrone High School in 1980. She continued her education at Oklahoma Baptist University, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Music and Piano. Tanya then received a Master's Degree of Religious Education at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. Tanya spent several years following her graduation working as a children's minister and daycare director in North Carolina and in Oklahoma. She then worked with Oklahoma Baptist University in the campus ministries office for many years. Her time at OBE was very important to her because it allowed her to support student ministries and missions not only here but around the world. Tanya transitioned from the position of OBU to become a social worker with the Oklahoma Department of Human Services so that she could live closer to her family. Tanya invested heavily in her jobs and loved working in places that allowed her to make a positive difference in people's lives. Tanya was deeply devoted to her family. She was ever present in the lives of her parents, her brother and sister-in-law and niece and nephews. It didn't matter what the family was doing, exciting or mundane, enjoyable or exhausting, Tanya was there and she was happy to be there. And even though Tanya was quiet and appreciated being in the background, people never failed to notice her kindness and her loving spirit. And I'm sure many of you here testify that today. Tanya survived by her mother, Peggy Ritchie of Perry, Oklahoma, her brother and sister-in-law, Kent and Shanna Ritchie of Perry, her niece and nephews, Beth, Jess, and Coleman Ritchie of Perry, Oklahoma, her brother and sister in love, Wayne and Ellen, Ellen Edwards of Ponca City. Tanya is preceded in death by her father, Don Ritchie, her grandparents, and several aunts and uncles. You know, when I think of Tanya, I think of certain words. One of those words is devoted. She was devoted to her family and she was devoted to her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I think of that word committed because she was totally committed, totally sold out to Jesus Christ, serving him wherever he led her. She was committed to whichever church she is a member of at that time. She was devoted, she was committed. And then I think of loving and caring because that's who she was. She just loved people and loved caring for people. You know, those are the words I think of. Then that final word is faithfulness. She was so faithful to her church, to her family, to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Devoted and faithful and caring and loving and committed, that's Tanya. Let me share with you some memories from the family. 
These are Kent's memories of his sister. He said, Tanya was always going out of her way to help anyone who needed it. She wanted to take care of everyone. She enjoyed being with family, but was always satisfied to stay in the background. Tanya loved being Aunt T to Jess, Beth, and Coleman. She always made time at, at her house about doing everything they wanted to do, going where they wanted to go, and eating what they wanted to eat. We could find more trouble on our camping trips. Between squirrels eating holes in our tent to get to the bread, or raccoons chewing a hole in the lid of the grease can, and skunks getting close enough while we were fishing to pet them, there was always a great time. She never wanted to make a decision. If you asked her where she wanted to eat, it was always, it doesn't matter to me. If you said, well, how about we eat here or go here, she'd always say, either's fine. Tanya was quick thinking. When I was in grade school, I was angry with her because she was trying, in my opinion, to be my second mom. <laughs> she had her head in a cabinet under the counter. I came up behind her and shoved her in the back of the cabinet. Before she could get her head out, she put ketchup on her head to make it look like she was really bleeding. <laughs> Way to go, Tanya. I never figured out how she got on her head so quickly. She was very frugal. When others would, have an, would open up a new jar of peanut butter, Tanya got a spatula out and cleaned that jar out completely. These are memories from her sister-in-law, really her sister, Shanna. Tanya and I were completely different people, but got along incredibly well. We had a rhythm and an easy way of being together. Maybe because I didn't mind leading and she didn't mind following. We were like a choreographed dance in the kitchen with her totting up as we worked and handing me whatever I needed before I even asked. I would always tell her she was the best chef ever. She didn't like to cook by herself at all, but she always seemed content when we were together in the kitchen. Some of her best times together were camping trips and best memories were about the not so ideal situations like rainstorms and trying to hold the tent down, snag lures, skunk encounters, snake encounters, deer hunters on the mountain hikes, and raccoons that tried to break into our car. It was important to Tanya to spend time with the kids, support them, and of course play with them. Jess and Beth would have Tanya time every summer when they would go stay with her in Shawnee. After she moved in with us, she would take Coleman on endless trips to the park. She attended school events, church events, sports events, youth Bible study trips, plays, music, recitals, whatever was going on, Tanya was there. We colored Easter eggs every year, carved pumpkins every year, went to Branson at every, every year at Thanksgiving, started listening to Christmas music as soon as possible each year, and no year was complete without a viewing of White Christmas. Tanya was a protective aunt and often cringed at what Kent and I would allow, making known her concern for whatever it was we were allowing. She had her own Aunt Tanya rules for when she was in charge. The rules were, no blood, no broken bones. <laughs> she would fret over them and would often give them lots of instructions for being safe. Tanya would sometimes sit down to the piano and just start playing. Often I would end up at the piano with her singing hymns or show tunes and our favorites, all the Christmas songs. I will miss that so much. When Chanya was first diagnosed with cancer, there was no question we would be doing things together. I would do all the reading and get all the info from the doctors, and she would want me to filter it and just tell her what she needed to hear. She couldn't handle all of that info, but, I knew I, but she knew I would take care of her and let her know what she needed to know. She really fought, fought hard and stayed in it through some really tough times. This last day in the hospital after the nurse left, she said, so what is next? I asked her what she meant and she said, is this a quick thing or drawn out? I said, are you asking me for a time frame? She said, yes. Now in over two years, Tanya had never wanted to know a time frame. I told her the nurse said she had about three to five days. She was really surprised and disappointed and said, I just thought I had more time. So she lived three more weeks, <laughs> got to see Jess and Beth, was visited by so many friends and family, and I hope she really got a picture and all that, the extra time of how much an impact she made on the people she was in contact with without even trying. Tanya was really upset after it came time to stop the treatments. She said she had prayed and prayed for healing, and that maybe she was being taken down because it was, she was just taking up space. She could not have been more wrong about that. Because without her, there would be an incredible void that only she could fill. 
I pray your last few weeks will prove to her how invaluable she really was and that it clearly was just time for her to receive a well-deserved heavenly reward. And then Wayne and Ellen. Wayne remembers when Tanya locked her keys in their car at seminary and called him to come help. He went over and used a coat hanger to get into her car. It wasn't very long after that when she did it again. I remember her very sheepishly asking Wayne to come help her again. He did, of course, but he never let her live it down. One of my favorite memories with Tanya, Ellen said, happened at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. We went to put gas in her car a few blocks from her apartment, and after she put the gas in the car, she went in to pay for it, and to her horror, she had forgotten her billfold. Well, I had mine, but I didn't have enough cash to pay for it. So we asked the cashier if I could stay there as collateral <laughs> if I could say just go out until we, we went back to her apartment, she went back and got her billfold, that would be okay. He wasn't real thrilled about me being collateral, but he said okay. I think it was the only time I've ever been collateral, and I teased Tanya about it forever. Another funny thing happened at seminary was one night Tanya came over to, to eat supper with us, I bought a two liter of Dr. Pepper that day. I guess it all got shaken up and rode around the car on the way home. Tanya went to fix her and Wayne a glass of Dr. Pepper. And when she turned the cap, the bottle of Dr. Pepper erupted in a stream of Dr. Pepper that went all over the kitchen. It was on the ceiling, the stove, the fridge, table, chairs, sink, and everywhere before she could get it closed again. We got so tickled, we just sat and laughed for a long time before we could start even cleaning it up. Great memories. Coleman said, my memories are my Aunt T playing with me, always being happy, camping with her, teasing her about being cold, snuggling with her on the couch, always being there for me, bunking together in her cabins on Branson vacations, riding roller coasters with me, always willing to read me a bedtime story, staying with me, staying with me when mom and dad went out on dates. We listened to Christmas music every night at bedtime. Just said this about Tanya. He said, Tanya was always there for you, always rooting for you, and wanted to see everyone succeed and enjoy themselves. We always loved going to stay with Tanya when she lived in Shawnee. She made the whole visit about having fun. She would let us make homemade pizzas, and she would always take us to the Children's Museum. She was an aunt, but also a friend. She never wanted to drive herself, so I, always, I would always drive her. We had great conversations driving home. She was always never not worried about our safety. Beth said, my best memories include getting to stay at her house. We would drive down listening to Hank the Cow Dog, our Beach Boys CD. Eating our homemade pizza living room while watching Bed Knobs and Broomsticks or Mary Poppins. Later when I was older, there were nights that we would just sit and talk about school, friends, or just whatever. And it didn't really matter how late or that she had worked the next day. One of the things I will miss the most is when Tanya would sit down at the piano and play when we would join her and sing. Her number one rule was, though, always, no blood, no broken bones. <laughs> and I'm sure all of us here who knew Tanya have great, great memories. I got to be, my family got to be a part of some of those Branson vacations, and I remember that Thanksgiving dinner we all had together. What a great time. What I want you to do right now is just think about some of the memories you have of Tanya. And then just pray and thank God for those precious memories. Because I want you to understand, not even death of her physical body, not even separation from her, the fact she's in heaven now, can take away those memories and those love that she had for us and we have for her. And again, nothing can take away those precious memories. They're forever. Think about those memories and then just spend time thanking God for them. Oh God, we do thank you for these precious, precious memories. Thank you so much, Jesus. And God, we look forward to being able to share those memories again with Tanya. Once those of us who know Jesus the way Tanya did will be reunited with her in heaven. And what a great reunion that will be, Jesus. We look forward to that day. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Tanya again is in heaven. 
because she had victory in Jesus. When uh, Tanya never really talked about this, um, but when mom asked her, you know, specifically who she wanted to do it, she said, buddy, and when she said, what songs? She said, victory in Jesus and blessed assurance because that was her hope. And um, we just ask you to join with us as we sing about that victory we have in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His glory Of His precious blood to you from 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy 4 beginning in verse 6. For I am already, this is Paul talking, Apostle Paul, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Therefore is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. In this text, Paul is writing to Timothy concerning this young man's ministry. 
Now, Paul at this point had accumulated quite a few years in his life, and many of those years had been very difficult. If you know anything about the Apostle Paul, you know he'd been in prison, shipwrecked, uh, beaten, tortured. But now he was at a position in his life to offer a perspective on his own experiences as well as Timothy's. Paul was primarily encouraging Timothy here to do his duty. Timothy was charged to fulfill his ministry, the calling that God had put upon his life. Now, Paul had reminded Timothy that he was not alone in life's journey, that God was with him, watching over him, walking beside him. Paul also reminded Timothy that he was responsible to God. He was accountable to God. In fact, each one of us as Christians, we're responsible to God for the stewardship of our life, how we live our life every single day. The way we use our days is of great interest to God because he loves us. He is our Father. Now, Paul's age and circumstances add a very tenderness to these words. You see, this honest man of God knew that he was close to the end of his life. And now he was able to look back over his life and truly express his feelings. And in verse 6 right here, Paul tells us now that he knows his time has come. Death for Paul and for each one of us as Christians is not a great tragedy. And Tanya knew that. Death for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior simply means it's time to go home, to be in glory with the glorious one, Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that he had fought the good fight. He implies the victory was his, which, which it was. He not only participated in the race, but he, he finished that race that he had began, and he did it without losing the faith. faith. He ran well, he finished it well. And when he appears for the judge, he knew that he'd be crowned the victor and be given the victor's wreath. You know, Paul's description of his life, it's, it's, it's not being boastful or arrogant. It's just an honest affirmation of who he knew he was in Jesus and where he was going and about his just rewards that Jesus had promised him. And in so doing, Paul's reminding each one of us that, yes, sometimes life is a struggle. And the race is not over until we finish the, 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 the finish line. It is never over until we finish that finish line. The race, we must run it well every single day, not just at the beginning and not just at the end, but every single day. There can be no letting up until the race is over. And Tanya knew that well. She hung in there. She fought. She ran. She stayed true to the very end. You know, she served God in a lot of different ways. She loved playing the piano in her churches. Uh, she was faithful there at First Baptist Orlando and in every church she's a member of. She was a firm believer in God's word and his truths. And just like Paul, Tanya could say, I fought, I finished, and kept. And now the victory is hers. She really does know what victory in Jesus is really all about now there in heaven. And what a sense of joy I think you know, one must have when they're able to look back on their life and, and truly know in their heart that they gave their best to the Lord and Savior Jesus, that they ran the race well, that they had given everything they could to the Lord and given him their best. And Tanya, just like Paul, could say that. And Tanya, just like Paul, appreciated life. She appreciated all of it. She knew that life was precious. Notice that Paul referred to it as a good fight. Now, why is it a good fight? Because his race was for God, and he kept the faith throughout the race. Paul said, I've kept the faith. Christians, brothers and sisters here today, when our hour comes, when our race comes to an end, I hope each one of us will be able to look back over our life, just like Tanya did, and say, I gave it my best. I finished well. Second, Paul referred to life, which now is. Now, in his earthly state of mind, he was able to say, I am now ready to be offered. In other words, Paul was saying, my work is done. The task that God had called me to, I have fulfilled it. And now it's time for me to move on. A move that he was ready to make. You know, I think only a man or a woman at peace with God could make that kind of a statement. But Paul could. And Tanya could too, right? You see, Paul's not the only one who knew that he ran the race well. Tanya did. She was a woman of determination, who had a steadfast walk with Jesus. She invested her life in the Lord's work. And everyone who knew her admired her as a true saint of God. Third, Paul pointed out in the scripture passage the life that is to come. 
Paul anticipated the eternal life when he was saying there, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. There was no question in Paul's mind about his reward. And Paul knew that death was not the end. In fact, it was just the beginning. It was the beginning of what life is really all about there with Jesus. And so it is with Tanya. Because her faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because she accepted him into her life and made him her Lord, she has now received her reward. She's in glory with her Lord and Savior. Like I said there in the beginning of this service, she's walking those streets of gold. She's bowing down before her Lord and Savior and worshiping him face to face. Therefore, in the midst of, yes, some pain and, glory and, and grief today, because we are separated from her for a while, there can also be celebration. And that's what I meant at the beginning. This is a celebration of her life. It's a celebration of life that is past, present. But most of all, for us as Christians, this is a celebration of life to come because we know this is not goodbye to Tanya. This is simply good night. Those of us who know Jesus, we will see her in the morning. Until then, may we run the race in such a way that we can say with Paul and we can say with Tanya, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. I'd like we listen to the words of this song. You know, the Bible talks about whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. And um, that was Tanya's life. And so this last song, we just want it to be a time of worship. So if you know the words, please join in with us. And let's just, let's celebrate Tanya, but also celebrate the great God that we serve. Amen. No shadow you won't light up Not 
mountain, you old climber, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain, you old climber, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fight till I'm found, peace and mighty night. I couldn't earn it. Don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Breathless love of God after, You may remain standing After I pray here in just a moment The family will be escorted out I think they'll be around a few moments Maybe visit with you but we'll be going to Oklahoma City to lay the earthly tent, the physical body that Tanya lived in there in the ground of the cemetery. But again, one more time to remind you, Tanya's alive and well. She's in heaven because of faith in Jesus. And let me just say, if you have never prayed and asked Jesus to come in your life, forgive you of your sins and be your Lord and Savior, I would love to explain to you how to do that today. We have other ministers scattered throughout this auditorium who would love to visit with you and explain to you how you can one day be in heaven with Tanya again through your faith in Jesus if you never accepted him. So I'll be around, these other ministers will be around, we'd love to visit with you. Let me lead us in prayer. Father God, again, we just thank you for this time of celebration. God, we thank you for the fact that Tanya has been healed and she is there with you, Jesus, praising you. We just thank you for that. But again, I do pray for your comfort and your strength upon this family. There will be tears shed because it's just a way of helping us wipe away that, that pain we feel when we know a loved one is not with us. But we can also shed tears of joy knowing that we'll be with her again one day. So Jesus, thank you for that blessed assurance that we have in you. Go with this family. Go with this congregation wherever we go today. Walk with us and guide us and direct us. And may we bring glory to you in all that we do, Jesus. Thank you again for Tanya. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen.